Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsani ila yawm ad-din wa ba'd. So I'd like to welcome you all to week 9 of this book that we're doing Aqidah to Awam which is translated as the belief uh the Aqidah or the belief of the Awam the common folk the laity or the general people. Uh, which includes all of us, inshallah, at the island. Um, last week, we left off on uh, line number 14, I believe it was. We went, we did a review of the necessary attributes for Allah. And so, first of all, when we start this knowledge, who is this knowledge uh, incumbent upon? Who has to learn this knowledge? Every one of all of us. Well, let me put it another way. Who is responsible? Muhala. The one who was what? Mukallaf. What is the meaning of Mukallaf? Um, first, they have to be Muslim, mm -hmm. reach the age of puberty. Mm -hmm. um, the knowledge of Islam has to reach them, and they have to be sane. Okay. Muslimun, Akilun, Salimun, Baligun, right? And so that's when a person becomes responsible in Islam. That they're responsible. They reach the age of uh, puberty. Uh, they have all their faculties intact. They're not, um, you know, uh, other than sane. And the proper message of Islam is reached them. And so once they reach that, then these uh, obligations, what we're learning here, um, is what a person needs to know. It is necessary. It is wajib for them to know that a person is sinful if they don't know these issues that we're discussing. So <laughs> we've already discussed the, the uh, uh, for those who are just joining us today, uh, Sister Candice and uh, uh, Brother Tyrone, um, you guys, I, I know Brother Tyrone was in the class of, some, some while ago, and Sister Sherry, uh, salam alaikum. Uh, so we, um, you can go back and review the YouTube videos. I think we have, yeah, we have like, yeah, eight or nine videos up already. Uh, so now we reached a section about the prophets. All right. Um, so we want to discuss that today, inshallah. Okay. Well, who's the author of the book? What's his name? Do you, Sister Candice, do you have a I, copy of the book? No, I would really appreciate if I can get one. Yeah, if you could put your email in the uh, the chat box. Yes, sir. Yeah, put your email and I'll make sure I send you a, a PDF copy. I appreciate that. Okay. So wh who's the who's the author of the book? Um, Ahmad Ibn Marzuki Ibn Maliki Ibn Husani Ibn Husseini Ibn Misri Ibn Maliki. Okay, now all of those names, what does that all of that tell us about who he is? His family, uh, who's his father? Oh, go, Sister Nunu, you got this. No, the, the lineage of him, um, his, um, the grandsons, Hussein, Hussan, um, what he studies under Maliki, mm -hmm. where he's um, born, mm -hmm. Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, good. So he was uh, in, uh, that he tells us his name, where he was from, Al Misr, which is Egypt, and Hassan Al Husseini means he was the descendant of the Prophet. Which uh, what's the other title that's uh, descendant of the Prophet? What is that known as? Alu Bait. Yeah, Ahlul Bait. Okay, and then also it tells you what Madhab he follows, uh, which is the Maliki school of thought. And it also tells you that he was, uh, he said Al Azhar, that he was Ashuri. All right. And so this creed is a uh, basic uh, Ashuri creed, Ashura creed that we already studied already, the, the, the part about belief. Um, I don't want to take too much time and going back over that. So I want to start where we are. Uh, so we uh, got up to line 14. Um, and now we're starting on line 15. Uh, 
starting with the the necessary belief in the prophets all right so we covered that with Allah and the messengers there's uh beliefs that are wajib about them that are necessary for one to know beliefs that are uh jais that are possible for them and beliefs that are mustahil things that are impossible for them so who can give me just a summary just as a, a little review uh for our new students what you mean what do you ask those, those terms wajib jais and mustahil oh okay so um wajib means that that how can i say? well basically you believe it's necessary it's obligatory to believe in these particular attributes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the intellect cannot um conceive the absence of them uh or such comprehend as, the absence of them yeah, right? such as what such as what such as um allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being our would you pre-existing um uh would you means pre-existing yeah or what are you just messing with me? Existing. I'm not messing with you. Just existing. <laughs> or pre-existing, right? Yeah, yeah, you could say it. But the other one is uh al kidam which is pre-existing without a beginning. So Allah existing, and then kidam means that he pre-exists without a beginning or eternal. or pre-eternal, pre-eternal. Okay. All right. Al Awal, the first. Uh-huh. Al Awal. Al 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 Wal is that how you say it? Al Awal. Al Awal. Okay. Uh -huh. We gonna take this Arabic class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mashallah. And so that's an example of two uh, attributes of Allah that are necessary for His existence, and that the the mind cannot conceive the absence of them. So we have to believe that Allah not only is He one, but He exists. He exists pre eternally, and He has no ending. And all those other attributes that we covered. And also, what is an example of something that is jaiz for Allah that is possible? I'm about to use my note on that one. No, but you not. gave us the name um Fil Kulu Mumkin Al Tarkuhu. Which okay. means doing anything possible or leaving it. Okay. But it's not so, compelled. Right, right. Good, good. And so what is something that is impossible for Allah? Al Adam. Okay, what does Al Adam mean? Non existence. Okay. And so those attributes that are the opposite of those necessary attributes, they are impossible for Allah. What is the meaning of mustahil? That meaning that these things cannot apply to Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his majesty. So if Allah exists, then non-existence can is impossible for him. That if Allah has pre-eternal ex existence, or he has he does he has he's attributed with al baqar which is uh everlastingness or not coming to an end or cease not never ceasing to exist, then the opposite of that meaning uh fana or annihilation that this is impossible for allah who's a panel about it and so forth and so on and those 20 necessary attributes that we covered all right um so sister candice and uh sherry you you all have to go back over the youtube videos because uh inshallah so, um what, what i would like to do but if, if you think this is okay is what i plan to do is um outside of my regular reading i'll read I'll catch up on the book. I'll read that, but whatever chapter we leave off on, I'll review that. So I, next week, I could also maybe participate a little bit more. Okay, inshallah. Okay. 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 No worries. Um, then also for the messengers, they have attributes that are necessary for them for them to be prophets and messengers. For instance, what's what's an example of an attribute that a prophet has to have? Asidik. Uh, uh, as, yes, Asidk. Asidik. Asidik. Yeah, which means truthfulness. All right, and so that is an attribute that is necessary for all the prophets. And the opposite of that is is what? 
lack of that. Is it Kad Kahib Al Kahib? Kazib. 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 Line. Yes. So it okay. isn't. So if the the prophets have a necessary attribute of being sidq or truthful. And the opposite of that, which is lying, kathib, it is impossible for prophets to lie. And then what is what is something that is jah is for the prophets, as an example? Okay, wait a minute. Let me get my note. You supposed um, to run this off the top of the head. Well, I know the rest of them now. <laughs> this no, one but I'm just saying what's possible. Right here. So what is possible um, for the prophets? Um, Al Aradul Basharia, which uh -huh. means they have human characteristics. Right. Okay. So, alhamdulillah. All right. So that's just a quick review, inshallah, to Ayla. Uh, so we're gonna start with any any questions before we go on. Anybody? Okay. So we covered the. Uh, we covered the part about the belief in Allah. Uh, it's pretty. It was pretty extensive. We went over and those attributes. Um, so now we're going to start on what we're supposed to know about the prophets. Um, we covered a little bit of that, and uh, now we're going to start at line fifteen. Hold on. Second, I'm always messing this up. Okay, I see that. Oh, okay. slide show from the current slide. Okay, you all can see that, right? Well, not yet. So line 15 in the book, um, the author says, Tafsilu khamsatin wa ishrina lazim kula mukallafin fahakki wagatanim. And that he says, it is imperative to know the names of 25 on every responsible sane adult, learn and benefit from it. Okay. Everybody have their, well, Sister Candice probably doesn't have the, well, she doesn't have the book, uh, but everybody else has the book? Yes, but yes. not with me. Say it again. Yes, but not with me right now. Okay. Yeah, you have a question, Aki? Tyrone, you have you have a question? Yes, not. No, no, sir. I'm just I'm working and doodling on my phone as I'm working. Okay, but I'm sure. listening though. Okay, uh, so this is line fifteen. It is imperative to know the names of twenty five prophets on every responsible sane adult learn and benefit from it. Okay. So this is a responsibility upon whom we already mentioned for every mukallif. And just to repeat it here, uh, Sister Zachariah, what is one who is mukallif? One who has reached the age of puberty, one who is sane, one who has heard the message of Islam and they must be Muslim. Okay, so everybody who has those, uh, those uh, characteristics, they have to know these all of these issues that we're discussing and this is the basic this is basic belief in in islam and so the name of the book is akida to awam the akida or what is necessary for one to know for a general folk and then as you know this stuff as you know the curriculum in the ashari school you learn this stuff as basics and then you learn more and then you build on it inshallah to Allah. Right, you have a question bro Okay, yeah, the, the, when you hit that raise hand um, icon, it, it's, it means you have a question. Okay. 
All right, so for every Mukala, I have a question. But who has it? Me, Candace. Go ahead. So, um, reaching the age of pu pu puberty is that like what, 13, 14? What, how, what is that in Islam? And puberty, when there's uh, for male, is either when they have a, a nocturnal emission or a wet mm -hmm. dream, mm -hmm. or when they have pubic hairs, mm -hmm. or they, their age of 15. And okay. so, whichever one of those comes first on the male, then they have that's the age of responsibility they become a color. Oh, and for okay. a female is when she uh, gets her cycle. So when they reach that age, uh, that means they become responsible for knowing this knowledge for themselves. All right. And then before that, there's another age. Anybody want to take a stab at it that we discuss before one become the, the age of taklif, which is responsibility or accountability. There's something before that we discussed. We discussed it before. So now I'm jogging your brain. Remember the age when kids start to learn right and wrong when they're able to feed themselves? Oh, they're able the to. age of seven, about seven. I think you said seven, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, around six or seven. But what is it called? It starts with a T. Okay, T by itself don't mean nothing. What is the word? <laughs> Let me. I'm trying to go through my notes. Uh 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 uh. We gotta do this without no notes. Lies you tell. Top leaf. <laughs> is that it? Oh, no, wait no. a minute. Ta, oh, is it ta, um, ta, how you say it? T A M Y I Z? Tam Yeez. Tam Yeez. Tam Yeez. Tam Yeez. Tam Yeez. Not Tam Yeez. Tam Yeez. Yeez, like Yeezy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Tam Yeez. Got it. <laughs> Yeah, and so the one who was uh, the Tamiz is the age of, of knowing right from wrong, right? And the one who was uh, who knows that is Mumayiz. That means the age of distinction. That's when children start to learn, you know, how to be able to like put their shoes on, eat their own food, start forming their thoughts. So they, you know, there's a period before you're responsible that you actually know right from wrong. But during that period, you know, you're not accountable. You know right from wrong, you know things, you know what you shouldn't do, you know what discipline is. And so during that age, you know, children basically have a, a, a free, you know, a free reign before they actually become accountable. But that doesn't mean you just give them a free reign. You know, it should means we should be disciplining them, teaching them, you know, etiquettes, adept, all that kind of stuff, and starting to teach them uh, stuff about a law that's very simple for them to understand like that. Okay, so in the line in the um, the the, the uh, poem, uh, the sheikh mentions he used the word tahakkuk, which means verification, and here it means tayakon. Tayakon means to have certainty. So that is the purpose of these knowing these prophets and knowing their names, and uh, we're going to be memorizing the names. Uh, we might do some today. But if we don't get to it, we'll start next week. We're going over um, reviewing the names, inshallah. And so this is the purpose of it. And then there's an ayah from the Quran um, in Surah Hud, ayah 120. Allah says, in each story we relate to you, meaning the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, from the news of the messengers is that by which we make firm your heart. So this is the purpose, purpose of those stories of old so that we learn all of the examples, the trials, the tribulations, all of the things that the, the chosen messenger of, messengers of Allah went through so we can have firm iman because when we measure up the stuff that we're going through uh, uh, to theirs, you know, we're not really going through anything, you know. And uh, as we read their stories and some, you already know these things, but, uh, or some of them, uh, but we want to make sure before we finish this course, that you all have a memorized. So, and uh, as my students already know, you got to run them off the top of the head, you know, after we go over them, of course. And so everybody in that part has to participate. All right, no more, and no hiding behind the screens. <laughs> okay, any questions on that? Any questions on that? 
line. All right, so let's go to the next line. So this is line 16. And so he begins here, the author beginning the names of the prophets. Who are they? Whom Adamun Idrisu Nuhun Hudun Ma Saleh wa Ibrahimu Kulu Mutabbe. He says, and they are Adam, Idris, Nuh, Hud, Saleh, and Ibrahim. Everyone is to be followed. Every one of them is to be followed. Okay. This is line 16 in the book. All right, let's go to the next slide. So the prophets and messengers, uh, as he mentioned in the line before, in line 15, that there are 25 that it is necessary for all of us to know. So we'll go over them briefly. So the first one is Adam, who is the first prophet and the father of humanity. And so Adam had a son who had several sons. Uh, how many sons did Adam have? Anybody know? I don't know because they said they were. Is it true that um, Hawa um, had 40, 20 pregnancies and then she birthed twins in each one? And then it was like yeah, a boy and a girl for each. Yeah, that's one of the narrations. Uh, yeah, that's one of the that's one of the opinions. And Allah knows best. Uh, yeah, that is one. So, but the sons there are two that we 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 uh know uh, that he had. Oh, and, and some of y'all oh, went, to, y went to church, y'all did. Yeah, <laughs> Abel and, and Cain. Yeah. Cain and Abel, yeah, Cain and Abel, and, and, Seth. and yeah, yeah. Abel and Abel, right? Okay, and, and so, Seth, one of the, right? Uh, yeah, we're going to get to that. Uh, so, okay. uh, one of the one of the uh, understandings that because people ask, uh, well, Adam and Eve had two sons, then how did they cohabitate? Like, wh what happened, you know? And so, that's one of the um arguments that Eve uh had. Uh, what you just said, Sister Zachariah, um, uh, the pregnancy and the twins, and then the sons were able to marry one of the descendants of those, you know, and so that's how the um, the process began, right? All right, and then according it, to it some, was from the opposite, right? So say like the first pregnancy couldn't marry their sister, they had to marry the sister from the second. Is yeah, that, it's yeah, something like that. And um uh, and then that was part of the that was part of the uh the law or the sharia during the time of Prophet Adam that that was allowed. All right. Okay. The next uh so then um the next prophet that's mentioned is Idris and some scholars say that he was the fourth or fifth grandson of Adam and he is the grandfather of Nuh. The grandfather of Nuh. And he was the first person to write with an instrument and sew clothing. He was the first one to write with an instrument and sew clothing. Idris, I keep forgetting the English equivalents of these prophets, but I think it's Enoch. I think it's Enoch. Yeah, that's what I that's what I remember reading. Okay. Enoch. All, right. All right. The next one that's mentioned in the line is Prophet Nuh or Noah. And Prophet Noah was saved from the flood, except for his son. And you all remember the story in the Quran that his son didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't listen to reason. And so here is mentioned that Prophet Noah, he gave da'wah for 950 years, right? So he didn't live for 950 years. He gave da'wah for 950 years. So he lived over, he lived to be over a thousand years old, you know, and this is something that Allah was found with the will for people who came before us. This is not, uh, you know, in our times, you know, we barely making 60 or 70, you know, but during that time, Allah was found with the allowed people to live a long time. He is known as the father of humanity, the father of humanity. And uh, according to some explanations of the Quran, there are approximately 80 people on the ark with him, uh, with Noah, and of course with the animals and like that. And then he had he Noah had three sons, which was you know what uh, started to begin the beginning of humanity. So he had Sam, who was the father of Arabs; Ham, the father of the Abyssinians, Africans; 
and Yafet, the father of the Byzantines and Romans. Hold on, I'm still writing. Okay. And so, of course, we know, um, I think, according to the biblical version, that they believe that the flood, the, the flood of Noah, if I'm not mistaken, that they believe that it was through the through entire world. But that was not what Muslims believe, that they was doing that in the region that Noah was in. And Makes I believe, sense. huh? That would make more sense. That yeah. would make more sense. That would make more sense. That would yeah. Make more sense. Okay. yeah. Um, and I think, I think Noah was in the... Uh, uh, I think it was in the area, the area of Iraq, if I'm not mistaken. That's something we can look into. All right. So I didn't really want to go deep with historical references because this is just a general book where you all can search on your own. Inshallah, if anybody knows. Okay. Let me know when I can go to the next slide. Okay. Everybody good? And then there's three more prophets that are mentioned in the line. So it's Prophet Hood. So Prophet Hood was a descendant of Sam, and he lived in the area of Hadramaut. Hadramaut is, is in Yemen. And he lived with the people of Ad who were good at architecture, and they were punished with the wind. They were punished by wind. Because, you know, all of the prophets were sent to these people to guide them. And, you know, they, they had resistance from their own people. And so because of their people not believing in them, in some cases, you know, uh, mocking them and killing them in some cases, a loss and punishment to these people. And so, but they all had qualities, just like every people nowadays, they have characteristics about them that make them special. And so even if they were, you know, considered disbelievers, they had, they were good at architecture. You know, I think this is the one where they built their houses in, in the hills, carved their houses out of the hills. Okay, so how many prophets we got so far? Uh, four, four, four. Okay, what? Are, who are they? Adam, Idris, Idris, uh, Idris, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no. I'm so no. That's okay. No. Okay, I'll get it. And right. hood. And then hood. And hood. Okay. Good. That was good. <laughs> All right. I'm still cool. writing. Can we hope? Can we? Can, if not, it's fine. You can move on. No, no. We still got a couple of things. All right. So then the next prophet is Prophet Saleh, who was an Arab prophet. He was also a descendant of Sam, and he lived among the people of Thamud and punished with an earthquake. Those people were punished with an earthquake. For their disobedience. Right. These are the one with the rocks. They carved their houses out of the huge rocks and the mountains. The mountains, right? Is that the Ad people or the Thamud? I'm not sure. I had to go back and look. I thought it was the Thamud that did the rocks. I thought the Ad people was that not the one? Is that something? Did they are they different from the lofty pillars, like the big, tall structural buildings? No, that's was probably the people, like, really big yeah, buildings? that's probably the Ad people. Okay, I had to go back and look at it. Oh, but yeah, you might be right. Okay, so Sali was an Arab prophet, descendant of Sam. And then the next one is Prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salam. And he was also a descendant of Sam. Uh, one of his name is Khalilullah, and which means he was the friend of Allah. And he is also known as the father of the prophets. Father of the prophets. And some people, you know, they say that, you know, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are the Abrahamic religions. Uh, they all find a common ancestor with Ibrahim Alayhi Salam. Can I ask a question on that? Yes. So, is it, is it true that um, the Hebrews, like, because I know I was reading in the Quran that everybody was told about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. and all, and it said, it was saying in the Surah, that the tribes 
were also told about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that mm -hmm. he was going to be the one to bring the last revelation. So even though we had these previous scriptures and whatnot, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the one to be the prophet who brought the last revelation. To me, in my mind, it's kind of like you got one volume book here, and now you got a, the second volume, the final volume, the volume that's going to give you everything you need to know is how I would explain it to my Hebrew Israelites. Because I came from the tribe. I believed I was from the tribe at Ephraim, the part of the 12 tribes. Mm -hmm. So if I had to explain that, then correct me if I'm wrong, that's how I would say it. Yeah, that would be a good explanation, you know. Uh, okay. But what I mean, what do they accept it or not? Though that's <laughs> no, it's not. It's not about if they accept it, because some people is just stuck in a in yeah. a way and in, in mm. understanding. But it's for me if I was to be asked that, and I wanted to give an answer in confidence. Yeah. Then that's what I would say. Yeah, that'd be good, you know, because you know, scriptures, many scriptures refer to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they knew he was coming, you know. And uh, and so people, if they follow scriptures like they say, then they have to accept it, you know. But it's not on, it's not on them if they accept it or not for you to give the message. So, and and you coming from that background, you know how to, you know, uh, approach them best. You know, you know how to approach them best. Yeah, but that would be a good way. Okay, uh, are we able to go on or? Okay. So we got. We got Adam, we got Idris, Noor, Hud, Saleh, and Ibrahim. Six prophets so far. Okay, the next line is line number 17. And so in the book it says, Lutun wa Ismailu wa Ishaqun kada Yaakubu Yusufun and so he says the next next line of prophets is Lot or Prophet Lot, Ismail or uh, Ishmael, Ishaq or Isaac, and also Yaqub as Prophet Jacob, Yusuf, Joseph, and Ayub is uh, Job and in their footsteps. And so here we're showing a succession of prophets come, you know, a succession of prophets. Okay. So as we continue with more prophets and messengers, the first one is Lut or Lot. And Lut was the nephew of Ibrahim, and he was sent to the land of Sodom or Sodom. And so that land that people stopped being martyrs, and they were the first ones to practice homosexuality. And so there's an ayah in the Quran. You know, especially with this argument about people uh, being born in that kind of life. Uh, there's an ayah in the Quran that mentions that, you know, in Surah Al-A'raf, that no people had, and when he asked him, he said, stop this stuff. No one did this before you. And so that's a proof that Muslims use to say that this is not something that is inherent in people. It started from somewhere. You know, so a person can't make this claim that you know, that they were born this way, or some of the outrageous claims that people make. Uh, I think you all remember when, um, uh, what's this guy's name? Uh, Dwayne Wade, and he got his, uh, his, the, his, his son or whatever it is now, <laughs> said that he, they were saying stories that he knew when he was three years old that he wanted to be a girl, when he was three years old. You know, and they expect us to believe stuff like that, you know. And so, you know, but there, you know, when those people in, in the reality that people who are, are of that of that preference, you know, they there's some type of influence or usually some type of uh some molestation, something going on, or some exposure to something very corrupt, you know. And so that's the you know, the argument here that the Muslims believe, we believe that this started with the people of Lut. And uh, uh, as a side note, we call <laughs> we call we call those guys lutis. <laughs> so it's an English word equivalent, but I'm not going to use it on here. <laughs> you can question: you can, Was yeah. it also not Gomorrah 
Because, you know, like, I know the biblical story about it is Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. So what is... Yeah, I'm not sure. I have to look back into it. I haven't read those stories in a long time. Yeah, but it definitely could be true. All right. Okay. So it says the angel Jabril, when he punished the town, they, they had five villages of the people of Lut, and that he took the five villages on, on to the sky on one wing and turned them upside down. And so we read that story in the Quran about, and I think there was a, um, they did an archaeological study about these cities turned upside down. You all remember reading stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea. This, um, nothing can grow or anything. You can't get any fish or something mm. from that part of Palestine, right? Yeah. I'm going to look it up, inshallah, or you all can check it out as well. But I remember that scientists were talking about this and it was discovered it was these people of Lut because now you read these stories and people think that this is something like supernatural or like it couldn't have happened or they don't believe in these stories, these biblical, well not biblical stories, these uh, stories of the prophets of the past. But for us, these stories are to help us to, you know, be certain in our faith. Uh, you had a question, sis? Yes, I do. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, so to answer your to answer your question, now I know that they say that you could go where Lot wife was, where she looked back. That that image is supposedly still there. I'm not sure if that's true or not, or if you know any information about that. But when she yeah. turned into a pillar of salt, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. It's possible. You know, all of these things are from what's called the mumkinat. Mumkinat means possibilities. All these things are possible, and you know, Allah knows best. Um, so these are these are issues. Sometimes these stories come from what's called the Israeliyat, the stories of the children of Israel. Right. That we we either you know we don't confirm or deny them except with what the Quran tells us or what the Prophet told us. Right. All right. So, yeah, so the other question was, that I had really quick, uh -huh. if it's okay. Go ahead. The, as we go through the prophets, are these the same as the rankings, or is that completely different? Well, rankings, um, we believe in all of them generally are equal, but we believe they all have different virtues, right? Mm -hmm. And then we just believe that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the imam of them. He was the last one to seal. And so he has a little uh, distinction over them. But as far as rankings, um, I'm not sure there's rankings, but we just believe in all of them and all of the stuff that they, they taught and came with. Okay. But we Shukran. we put them in order as far as like chronological order. Shukran. Okay. You said moon cannot means possible. Possibility. M U M K I N A T. Possibility. Spell it again. M U M K I N A T. Moon cannot. Yeah. Moon cannot. That's the plural of mumkin. You know, it's something that's possible. So this is from the you know some of these things that you might read. We won't say that it's not true or, you know, try to make a big argument. It's it's possible, you know. I mean, when you talk about Sodom and Gomorrah and all the stuff that you read, maybe in the Bible, or other scriptures, yeah, it's possible that it happened. You know? Okay, thank you. Okay. The next prophet is Ismail or Ishmael, who was the son of Ibrahim and Hajar, born in Mecca. And he married, he married the daughter of the leader of the tribe of Jurham, Jurhum, with who and he was the father of the Arabs, Ismail. And so you know the story when you um talk about, you know, um, you know, we hear these stories, people don't like to talk about them. You know, when you talk about the prophets and messages, uh, you know, being being black, you know, we know that Hajar was a black woman. You know, and so the mother of one of the biggest, you know, sacrifice we make in Islam, she was a part of it, you know, with Ismail and Ibrahim and, you know, the Kaaba and building the Kaaba or rebuilding the Kaaba and stuff like that. So we don't want her history to be lost. Not that we're saying in like, like what, you know, people who are, uh, you know, nationalists with their race. No, just to know that there was, there was a black woman there, you know, so. Black women are the foundation, so give give yourselves a pat on the back, you know. 
I'll be like, I've okay. got my poetry fingers, my poetry fingers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I, somebody was telling me, I don't know what belief or whatever this is, but I know uh, Hajar, she comes from uh, Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. That's where she came. She came. She was the slave girl of the king who tried to seduce um, Sarah. But um, somebody said that, that that's not true because somebody said that in the Quran, she's not necessarily mentioned. Mm -hmm. In the Quran, so they only believe that he only had both of the children, Ishmael and Ishak alayhi salam, came from Sarah. Yeah, well, so they trying to, what do you try say? How do you say that? Like, I mean, like, I don't know. How do you explain? You know what I mean? Well, first of all, we shouldn't get in arguments with those people, you know, because this is for us to confirm, I believe, you know, I mean, if, you, if you're able to discuss it with them, yeah, but I mean, even history tells you that, you know, that Ibrahim had one son by one wife and the other one by other wife. But see, when they have some of their scriptures that they distorted, you know, they could say anything, you know, it's easy to say that and just black, just, you know, just uh, exit out, you know, Hajar, you know, because they said that she was a, a slave woman. But then we're talking about the necessary beliefs about the prophets that they don't commit sins. Right. So they don't like take. Uh, you know, uh, what they call it is that she was she was his bond woman. No, the prophet Ibrahim married her. You know, because prophets they have to get married, right? Or or they or, or either they're abstinent, right? And uh, and so he married her, and he had a son by her. You know, and that's that. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and for people who said then they they could say it's not true, but then you know they would have to prove it if they if they believe that. Also, I would love to add, if I may, that right. sometimes we get into these little debates, quote unquote debates of information, which is of course an honor to know, but then we are completely not meeting none of the obligations as far as the major thing, but right. we're so consumed and these little things and historical facts. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. I also take that in mind as well. Yeah, things that will- Oh we'll, yeah, I didn't believe them. I was oh, just no, not wanted to see I'm what the saying. email had to say about it. Cause I felt, to me, I felt like he sounded like a fool, but you know, I just, <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? I just wanted yeah. to see someone more knowledgeable thought in regards to that. Yeah. Oh yeah, nothing against what you're saying. It's just, I just think that it's just interesting how people may do these little things or have comments about certain things or be quick to debate about historical things but not understand the the major sins that we shouldn't commit like completely just void that out Let, let's talk about this that's, yeah. that's what i mean or people will you know engage in these arguments and miss the whole lesson about you know what happened with these people and what what we're supposed to extract from it with relation to our faith because you know, we believe in all of the prophets and the messengers, and they are connections to Allah. So what we do is take the lessons from their stories and the, the, the triumphs that they, they had and the, the trials and all the things they will come. And so to make our hearts firm. All right. So the next one is Prophet Ishaq, who is the son of Ibrahim and Sarah and the brother of Ismail. And he is known as the forefather of all of the prophets of Bani Israel. All right, so we already mentioned that we have we have Hood and we have Sali, who were not from the Bani Israel, but prophets. And uh, Ishaq, uh, he moved from Palestine to Iraq, where he died. He moved from Palestine to Is uh, uh, Iraq, to uh, where he died. Question. There's Sorry. four Arab prophets, right? Uh -huh. It said that there are four Arab prophets. Was I thought Hood was an Arab prophet too? Is that not correct? Yeah, he is. I thought, I thought it was, was it Hood Sali? I know Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. I can't remember who the other one was. It um, um, Shuaib, right? I'm not sure, but that's a nice uh, research uh, assignment for you that you could bring next week. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Your your face is telling me something different, but I got you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And so uh can we go on next or 
<laughs> One second, please. Okay. You can go ahead. You can go. How many problems we got so far? Nine. Yeah. Who are they? Adam. Idris. 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 <laughs> I'm going to get it. Um, no, Noah, HUD, um, I'm, I don't know how to pronounce number five, Salah, Saleh, 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 uh-huh, Ibrahim, Ibrahim, uh-huh, Ibrahim, Lut, Lot, Lut, uh-huh, Lut, Lut, Ismael. Ismael. Ishaq. 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 Oh, right, because the double A is a little, you got to say that a little bit more, right? Yeah. Ishaq. Ishaq. Okay. Ishaq. Okay. Is it the, um, the ha, the big H, or the little H? The big H. Ishaq. Okay. Ishaq. Ishaq. It's, it's a cough at the end. Ishaq. It's I'm going to get it. Okay. Inshallah. Okay. I appreciate you. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. All right. Can we go to the next slide? Nah. -uh. All right. Okay. And so here's the added thing that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the only prophet is a descendant of Ismail. He's the only prophet is a descendant of Ismail. All right. And so all of the other ones. They were descendants of Ishaq, right? And so that's how he's known as the forefather of the prophets of Bani Israel. And you know, the Prophet Islam could trace his lineage all the way to Ismail. And so as you all, you, you, as you're seeing already as a pattern, that all of these prophets are related. Yes. All right. Okay. What makes me sad is that it kind of disheartens me. I don't understand. Well, I mean, so I just don't. I mean, I know it's history, and I, but I just if we if they're all related and everything, it's just disappointing to see the the um, separation when we were all called to be to create. I mean, to worship one Creator, but. Through everything that happened through history, like we become so divided when in reality we're all we're all connected. It's a family affair. It's sibling like rivalry. <laughs> yeah, it's a family affair when you understand it, you know. And uh and I guess sometimes family, you know, I mean, you see all the stuff that's going on in the Middle East. These are, you know, these are cousins fighting, you know. So may Allah restore peace there. I mean. All right, can we go to the next slide? Yes. Okay. So then the next the next one continue is Prophet Yaqub or Jacob, the son of Ishaq, and he had many sons, and there was four prophets in succession here. So Ibrahim, Ishaq, Yaqub, and Yusuf. So every time I would I, I read up these on the stories of the prophets now as a Muslim, I always remember uh <laughs> when I was, you know, we used to listen to rap music, you know, and uh one of my favorite artists was uh KRS one, well still is. And uh he had a song back in the day, um, Why Is That? You know. And that was the difference between us and the generation now. We had learned we was learning knowledge to rap. So I don't know if any of you, uh, some of you may remember, he had a song that was uh, when he was naming the prophets. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these are the children of Israel. I know I'm not supposed to remember that stuff, but I can't. <laughs> you all good. It's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm just thinking. boom bop on the ones and twos again. <laughs> Yeah, but I just, you know, thinking about it when I learned all this stuff in Islam, and I was like, wow, you know, and uh, 
but uh, I mean, he, you know, he had a different story according to the, the the biblical narrative. So we learned something else. Alhamdulillah. But and it was and just, the children of Israel were told, and I just have to keep remembering it because it just blows my mind mm -hmm. in such a in such a good way. The Mashallah. children of Israel were told to to worship one God. Is that mm -hmm. isn't that correct? Yeah. Like everybody was told. Yeah. And they started doing their own That's thing. That's the message from the days of Adam alayhi salam. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, we're going to cover this this next slide, and then we'll stop here. I wanted to try to go a couple other lines, but in the interest of time, um, let's see. So we got Yaqub, Yusuf, who was the son of Yaqub, and one of his uh, his qualities that Allah gave him the best character and looks. Uh, uh, anybody remember hadith uh, related to the Prophet Yusuf salam, that the Prophet salam mentioned? Was it the one where somebody was saying, talking about how he looks? Um, oh, the noble. The noble. Is that the one you talk about? He's the son of the noble, of the noble, of the. He said noble like four times. That's no, that's not. I mean, that's probably good, but um, that's not the one I'm looking for. I'm thinking of something else. Oh, it's about the one regarding his looks. Yeah, what about it? Oh, I think he, I remember reading that. It was something about, um, somebody was saying how, you know, how beautiful the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is. And that he was like, you know, basically if you've seen Yusuf, you know, he, you know what I'm saying? He has like, like what, half of the beauty or something like that it was saying? Half of the world's beauty is something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah, he was a uh, 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 he was a looker, <laughs> you know, for lack of a better term, a lady salam. So, I mean, you could just imagine how handsome he was. That the king's wife was like, you know, I need, you know, I want to holler at you, try to seduce him, <laughs> you know. Or them ladies who cut their hands, remember? Yeah, the ladies yeah. who saw him and he cut yeah. all their hands. Yeah. Okay, the next prophet is Prophet Ayub or Prophet Job. It's from the sons of the son of Ishaq or the son of the brother of Yaqub. And so he was either Ishaq's nephew or his great nephew. So that's one of the opinions. And he was tested with loss of his sons and sickness. And as you know, we mentioned before that some of these narratives that we read in like the biblical narratives that the from the necessary attributes of the prophets that they, they don't have distortions or disfigurements that will make the but will mar the, the message the mar the beauty of their message so the whole thing about uh, i think is in the bible about grubs and worms growing out of his face that we don't we don't believe that narration we don't believe that allah has sent prophets with a message and he sent his prophets to be um that they have they have uh what's called isma they have um uh, trustworthiness and they don't have any like defects you know like that's that would make people turn away from the message you know and so that's one of the necessary things that we believe about the prophet that they don't have those things that would you know like disfigurements and stuff like that all right, let's see. And I think that's the last part on this slide. Hold yeah. on, I'm still right there. Go back, oh, go back, please. Go back, go back. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, everybody got that? Everybody got those notes? Okay. All right, so um, we'll stop there and um, we'll continue next week with the rest of the prophets and then, then we'll do a review. But before we conclude today, um, did I record this? Oh yeah, I'm recording. Um, so, so far, how many prophets did we cover? 13. 
Right. Who can name him? Twelve. Huh? It's twelve. Twelve. We did twelve. Yeah. Maybe I. Maybe I, I must have not known it. Okay. What? What? What are the twelve? Oh. Um. Adam. Idris. No. Sali. Ibrahim. Loot. Well, you miss one. It's. Did I say hood? Did I no, say, you say hood? Oh. Adam. Idris. No. Hood. Sali. Uh -huh. Ibrahim. Ibrahim, uh -huh. Lut, Ishmael, Ishaq, Yaqub, Yusuf, Ayub. Ain't that 12? Yeah. I thought Prophet Muhammad. You know why I put Prophet Muhammad? Oh, no. Yeah, that was 12. No, I yeah, just that's where I messed up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So anybody else? I'm uh, like, sis, you about to have me confused. <laughs> no, my, my bad. Yeah, Sister Sherry, are you there? Hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm sorry. Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Okay, how are you following along in the class? Are you following along all right? Yes. Okay, Sister Sister Nunu. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, you want to give it a go? Off the top of my head, um... Let's see. Ishmael, Hood, uh, Ishak. Ishak, uh huh. Ishak. Uh huh. Hood. Uh, Those are lot, lot, loot, loot. Uh huh. That's all I got for you right now, off the top of my head. Okay. I didn't bring my my notes or paper with me. Oh, uh, man, that's that's etiquette of a poor student. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just mess with you. All I right, know. But, okay, but um, alhamdulillah. So I want you to all go over these uh these twelve, inshallah. Just try to you know each day just run them off, and next week I would like you to before we start. Before we start class, you have to tell me the 12 names of the proverbs that we went over. Right. Just the names, or you gonna ask us the, the descriptions and stuff. You know how you be doing. Yeah, we gonna uh, but we didn't go over in detail, so we're gonna go over it again. I just want you to get the names down. Okay. And before I take you to task about some of the descriptions that I mean, some of the stuff you already know, um, and there's more detail, but we're not covering the details in this course, all right. I uh, would just leave know the names of those 12 prophets and if you can do them in succession, you know. All right. Any any other questions? So are we moving on to the next chapter? Yeah, we covering this book line by line. So we'll start at line um uh, that was line 17 we left off. Yes. Yeah. yeah so we'll cover the next three lines in the next class. So 18, 19, 20? Yeah, so you can read up to there. So the book I'm going to send you is basically, uh, well, you missed a good part of this class, but um, it's this this book is in poetry form that the the, uh, the imam wrote, that he had a dream about the, this poetry. And in his dream, the Prophet Sallallahu approved of him uh, writing this these lines of poetry. So it's 57 lines that deals with ch 12 chapters which covers what a, a, a Muslim has to know as, as basic knowledge for their religion. Knowing okay. about Allah, the knowing about the prophets, then the next section we talk about the angels, the books, uh, the prophet's family, the Isra, Mi'raj, and other topics that, you know, a Muslim has to know these things, which is called Farda'ayn. You know what the meaning of Farda'ayn is? No. Uh, one of our elder students can tell her. Um, individual obligations, such as nice. like your salah and things like that, Love that you it. have to do individually. That's okay. an obligation. So this is the knowledge that is an individual obligation on every person that who is mukallif. 
which means that they, once they reach the age of puberty and they have a sound mind and they're Muslim and the proper message of Islam has reached them, they have to know for themselves this knowledge and they have to be able to, you know, internalize it and eventually be able to articulate it and use it to defend the religion uh, because this is this is the knowledge that is beneficial. All right. And so knowing these things, you know, memorizing them, understanding the terms and understanding the the uh, the explanations behind them. Mm-hmm. A person has to know them. They can't say, you know, they can't, uh, you know, say, OK, I heard it on a lecture or such and such is talking about it and it sounded good. No, they have to know it for themselves. This is knowledge they have to learn before they pursue other uh, branches of knowledge. All right. And so that's why we're taking our time with it, you know. Uh, making sure that we know that uh, well, we cover the necessary attributes in detail. We'll we'll revisit them then about the prophets, knowing their names, the attributes of the prophets, and stuff like that. So uh, you can read up. I'll send you the. Uh, I'll email you the uh, the book, and then you just read up to um, uh, line seventeen, and then we'll continue there. But I want all of you uh, to be ready next week to yeah turn your cameras on and recite twelve names of the prophets. We got Do I gotta turn my camera on though? Yep. I mean, you gonna have me put get. I gotta be. I gotta get dressed. Dressed, man. Yeah, yeah it's Sunday. You're <laughs> supposed to be dressed. It's Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, well, I'm dressed, but you know, I got my hijab on. I gotta let my locks flow. I gotta be yeah. free. I always wearing the hijab. <laughs> okay. Well, you could you could turn the cat. Well, no, I I'll make an exception for you, but. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be a. Uh, I'll be a good sport. All right, because well, I will be able to tell you reading off the paper or not though. You know that, right? Yeah, and you know I'm always honest. You heard what I said before. I gotta wait a minute. Hold on, I gotta get my notes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the lie. Yeah, so just give it. Oh, a but gra- sister Candice, just um, have sister. Or you send me a message. If you are, are you in our WhatsApp group for the Kuba School? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So just tag me and I can add you to our group because we have a study group for this class. And so that way we I can help you go over what we've already me and Sister Nudo can help you go over what we already covered. That way you can get caught up. Sounds you like know, I take really extensive notes. I have two notebooks. I have one that just has my real quick scribble and then I have yeah. the one that actually has the note notes in there. So yeah. I got you. Just yeah, surprise, because I'm like the same way. Yeah, all right, cool. Okay, alhamdulillah. So if there are no more other questions, um, we'll conclude here. Uh, we ask Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept this from us, make this knowledge yeah. beneficial that we that we will benefit by and help us get closer to him. I mean, subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdika, wa nashadu wa la ilaha ila anta, wa nastagfiruka, wa natubu ilayk. Al-Fatiha. Alhamdulillah. Okay, inshallah, I'll see you all next week. Walaikum <laughs> 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 <laughs>